he was the communist hardliner with a softer side. Jiang Zemin was also a shrewd and cunning politician. He rose to the pinnacle of power after the massacre of pro-democracy demonstrators in Tiananmen Square in 1989. He didn't order the crackdown, but was handpicked by the man who did, Supreme Leader Deng Xiaoping. A year after the bloodshed, Jiang Zemin told America's ABC News it was, quote, much ado about nothing. At first, he was written off by most as a political lightweight who wouldn't last. He was known as the flower pot, lots of decoration and no action, but history would prove them wrong. Jiang Zemin has had many more successes than failures, um, and he surprised many people with his staying power. As leader, he courted the military and was determined to keep the communists in power while pushing ahead with economic reforms. He's definitely not going to be remembered as China's Gorbachev. He's not even close. On an official U.S. visit in 1997, Jiang was lauded by Wall Street and chastised by President Bill Clinton over human rights. On this issue, we believe the policy of the government is on the wrong side of history. But he never gave ground on political reforms and explained why during a rare interview with CNN. I do think that to require all countries to adopt the same model of democracy would itself be undemocratic. He was leader when Hong Kong was handed back to the mainland, when Beijing was awarded the Olympics and business people were allowed to become communists. In 2003, he retired as president. A year after that, he gave up his last post as China's military commander, completing the first smooth leadership transition ever in communist China. I want to thank you for accepting my resignation, he said at the time. Jiang still exerted political influence behind the scenes for years, including the selection of current Chinese leader Xi Jinping, who secured a norm-busting third term as party head. Xi, China's most powerful leader in decades, has eviscerated political rivals, including those in Jiang's faction, and rolled back much of the economic and personal freedoms enjoyed during the Jiang era. In retirement, Jiang reportedly sang an aria at Beijing's National Grand Theater before it was officially opened. For a man who once ruled more than a billion people, the performance was said to be the fulfillment of a lifetime ambition. Yeah.